Hey guys, welcome back to another crazy love lamp video. So, I thought I'd um, recreate my last ones that I did in the first lockdown. And I made them glow in the dark. How cool do they look? I'm literally amazed. So, just like the last ones, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to block out the bottom half of the lamp. And as you'll see, my heating was on and my acrylic was drying really fast. So I'm just coming in trying to get that line. Not perfectly because I'm going to come in and file it. And fill in that cuticle area because the first bead didn't go right. So now I'm just going to file the shape. And I'm going to go over the top. Do you find whenever you're colour blocking, filing over the top and getting that part smooth, it does help a lot. And then I'm just going to file on top of the tip just to get away any smeary white bits so that when you do your actual lava lamp design, it, there's no, um, no white on the clear bit. So now I'm coming in and I'm doing the top of the lamp, tiny little bead, flattening it out. Try and perfect this one so I don't have to file. As you can see, just flatten that top part and just keep moulding it until you're happy with it. And then to get my glow, I've used all my glitter bell colours, which I will list in the description because I know there's flamingo feather I can't remember which yellow I used whether it was highlighter or whatever so I've just mixed some old glamming clips um, acrylic powders they're glow in the dark ones which they've been in a box for a long time and I've never really used them so I thought I'd give it a try and mix them with the colours and I wasn't sure because I thought wow this is going to end up looking more well not having the brightness that I wanted but no they came out looking great as you can see by the colours they're, they're still popping so it hasn't made them lighter so I was going to cut and only show you one lava lamp but I thought, you know what, they're just too pretty. So I've filmed the whole lot. And as you can see, my hand, in a minute, it will keep going off. It's like it doesn't want to be in shot. See? Back to the middle. So you're just going to need to use little beads and just build your little lava. It's really awkward recording your own hand. I don't know how people do it. And because I'm using my new KB Glow, because the camera's on top, rather than when before I was using my selfie ring and I'd have that at an angle so I'd be able to have my hand more up, whereas now I've got to have it more flat. If that makes sense. But you know, I'll get there. Just want to use little tiny beads. Because even if you're doing too small and you want them bigger, you can always add. You're better off to go small. And then coming in with some pink. Oh, I just love these already. As you can see, my little finger went in the purple pot. And it's now on my in index finger. So 
So when you're putting these beads down, you want to make sure that you go round them with your brush. Pop your brush in your monomer and then wipe off the excess and then go round because you don't want any residue around it. Otherwise, you're going to lose <coughs> the depths of that lava when they glow in the dark. I did notice on my little finger where the orange bit is, I must have had a bit of residue on the actual clear part because, I don't know, it kind of looks a bit frosty when it glows. But, you know, it was my first time doing them glow in the dark. So, I love the fact of the white contrast with the bright colours. They almost look kind of raised nails. But then when, <coughs> excuse me, when they glow, the white then glows, you'll see like in the video at the end or at the beginning, that the white part glows the same colour. So it really gives off a good effect of a lava lamp. Just call me the crazy lava lamp lady. It's fine. I can take that. There is no right and wrong way of where you put your beads either, so I just winged it. At first I was trying to go by the f a picture of my old ones, and then I thought, you know what, I'll just keep adding. As there's more little spots in these ones than there was in my last ones. I think these ones are actually my favourite. When I did my moving lava lamps... I thought they were cool, but these ones top both sets. So whilst everyone's in lockdown and bored, I want to see everybody uh, recreating glow-in-the-dark lava lamps. Give me a tag. Whether that's on Facebook or Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, why not? No, I'm joking. Yeah, sorry if this is getting a little bit boring <coughs> and tedious, but for people that haven't seen my previous lava lamp set, I thought if I keep this in, then at least you can see properly how I created each bit. But feel free if you've already watched my other one, or you've already recreated them and you want to skip, that's fine. Oh, and I don't think I actually told you how much um, of the glow-in-the-dark stuff I use. So I literally use equal amounts of like glitter bowels to the glam and glitz. So I use four scoops of the glitter bowels colours and then four scoops of the glam and glitz. I do think that <clears throat> maybe the darker colours like the purple and the blue could have done with like an extra one so if you are going to recreate them I'd give them an extra scoop of the glow in the dark just so that they glow a little bit more but I mean I'm happy with them as they are but I think if I was to do any more then I would add some more glow in the dark powder to darker colours just so it does make them pop a bit. So I'm going to um, apologise now because I have now found a new love for glow in the dark nails, which I never thought I would like. 
So for the next few videos that come up, they're all glow in the dark. I pre-warned you. I did apologise in advance, but I've got some crazy ideas. So <clears throat> I was wasn't going to actually upload this till later on in the week because I did only upload yesterday. But you know I can't keep these ones to myself, and I've already woke up this morning wanting to post pictures, but. I'm holding off on the pictures until I've uploaded them on, uploaded this video. So as you can see when I'm putting a bead on I'm doing it quite small and then I'm just adding where I need to because you want them to be quite 3D so when you look inside you can see that they're not flat I mean if you wanted to do them flat then you might as well just do gel polish but you do want to have them quite bubbly so that they stand out and so that they've got that dimension to them. And then the last one, my thumb, the green. Oh, when it glows. Yeah, I think that's my favourite colour out of a lot of them, is the green. It just glows like nothing else. When I got into bed, Obviously, they were, they were all glowing in the dark, but the green just, it was like atomic. Would that be the word? I don't know. It was just really bright. And I did get a little bit excited, so. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of glow in the dark now from now on, I think. And then that's the last little bead, and that part's done. Oh, do they look amazing or what? Or is it just me? Does anybody else share the same love? Oh, I just love them. The colours against the white. I was going to do black, and I'm so glad that I thought, no, I'm going to go white, because my last ones were black, and then I put chrome. And then I'm coming in and capping. Um using some monomer just to pop 
pop on top of that 3D work. So when you pop that bead on, the acrylic will just flow all around it. Um, if you don't do that, then nine times out of ten, you will get air bubbles in between. So it is wise to just wet your work up first before putting that bead on. And I'm working with thin beads, thin beads, little beads, um, just to avoid any big air bubbles, which, you know, it does happen. I don't think anybody can get a perfect encapsulated nail with no air bubbles when it comes to acrylic. Well, I can't. And I've seen other people that they've got bubbles in their work. I think if you want no bubbles, then you need something like um, Aquagel, whatever it's called, or even Builder Gel. But then I get, I still get bubbles in Builder Gel as well. So you know, and I always find that it goes like a little bit frosty when I work too thick. Maybe it's because I'm working too thick, and I've just got no patience to work layer upon layer maybe that would have gave it more of a crystal effect so maybe try builder gel or even that other that acrylic gel stuff i don't know what it's what is it even called i've got some somewhere but i can't i cannot get on with it i don't like filing it it kind of sticks to my files so i'm just all acrylic so then i'm coming in with my glitter brows no wipe top coat obviously filed them off camera because you don't want to see that part it's the boring part oh just look at them look at how they pop and then like any clear nail top coat underneath to make them all glassy. Oh, I just love those colours together. And that's it, guys. That are that is your glow in the dark 3D encapsulated lava lamp nails. They look amazing in the light and in the dark. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget, if you recreate, give me a tag. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.